In 50 BC, it was told that Gallia was under Roman rule, except for a small village that continued fighting against invaders. At the story's beginning, Asterix and Obelix are seen walking in the middle of the forest. While walking, Asterix tells Obelix that it seems their lifestyle is unhealthy for overeating meat. Asterix then had an idea for the two of them to start trying to eat vegetables. But of course, this idea was laughed at by Obelix, who didn't like vegetables at all. Asterix kept arguing that meat could be dangerous to health, and maybe the same goes for magic potions, which he wasn't sure was still valid, he needed it. In the middle of their debate, suddenly, Obelix's smell was directed at two Roman soldiers who were scared. The two soldiers reasoned that they got lost until they entered the village. Seeing the two soldiers continue to claim, Obelix felt exasperated and wanted to beat him immediately. However, Asterix held Obelix while throwing away his magic potion to prove he didn't need it. When he hit that soldier, Asterix immediately took out a pain because his hand wanted the helmets. Those two soldiers then beat Asterix with their shields while Obelix only watched, even though Asterix asked him for help. Inevitably, Asterix was forced to drink a magic potion, and instantly he got strength. He hit one soldier until he flew sore, and one soldier about to run away didn't escape his blows. While in the village, Obelix's attention was fixed on a beautiful girl named Panacea. Obelix then tried to approach Panacea and said he had carved a menhir as a gift for the girl. Panacea then noted that even though the menhir looks beautiful, she doesn't need it. Obelix then shared with Getafix after Panacea refused his gift, and according to Getafix, it was clear that Panacea had refused because the menhirs weighed up to one ton. Suddenly a horse-drawn carriage entered the village and all the astonished residents, including Asterix and the Obelix, immediately approached the carriage. Grandemace, who rode the carriage, then explained to Asterix and Obelix that he had come from China to ask for help. Grandemace then opened the carriage and saw two Chinese women who were sleeping. He explained that the sleeping girl was a princess consort named Fu Yi and her bodyguard, who called Tat Han. Grandemace said that Tat Han is a dangerous bodyguard who has defeated many of her enemies. A curious villager then tries to touch Tat Han, which immediately twists his hand. That made all the villagers laugh at the man. Hearing the commotion, Princess Fu Yi awakens. Asterix looks amazed by the beauty of the princess. Grandemais, who knows it, immediately warns Asterix that he and the princess have a relationship that is more than just friends. Vital Statistics, the leader of the Gallia, then appears in their midst. There is also a wife of Vital Statistics named Impedimenta, who brings a broom, hits Grandemais, and asks where his uncle, Epidemais, is because he had tricked her. Princess Fugia is trying to explain the purpose of her visit to Vital Statistics. The narrative tells that the princess lives with her mother, a consort who became a leader after the death of her husband, and she is currently in charge of six other kingdoms. She has to face an ambitious prince who secretly wants her throne. The problem precisely appeared on Princess Fuyi's birthday. Fuyi protested to her mother, because Fuyi was still not free to leave the palace at the age 20. She begged her mother to go to Galia, the excavations, and take a look at the figures in Lutetia. But for the sake of security the princess, the princess consort firmly refused. Fuyi then received a gift in the form of a coin from her mother, and left from her mother because she felt annoyed. After Fuvia left, the Empress then called Prince Dang Shin Kin, one of the princes of the Six Kingdoms under the Empress. The Empress reprimanded him for raising taxes arbitrarily while the people were getting worse and starving. Riti Kina, the Roman whom the prince appointed as his advisor, then explains and compares China and Rome. In Rome, Julius Caesar also raised taxes and had the same effect on society. But it succeeded in increasing state revenues. Knowing that Prince put Romans in office the strategic, the Empress then suggested replacing him. Before going, the Prince asked if she meant to propose to Princess Fu Yi was received by the Empress, but the Empress replied that Fu Yi thought it was just a joke. One day, the Empress, Princess, and Tat Han came to a shop guarded by Epidemes and Grandemes. Grandemes almost kicked them out, but Epidemes immediately recognized that the people who wanted to buy shoes at his shop were the Princess and the Empress. Suddenly, the shop was attacked by arrows released by the troops of the prince. Ta Han was brought immediately to protect Fu Yi and the Empress, Epidemes and Grandemes, who took shelter among the goods in the shop. The prince then asked the Empress to surrender. Epidemes then showed a secret door so the princess could escape. Shortly, finally, Epidemes and the Empress be able to be caught by the prince. Meanwhile, 
Fuyi leaves her hometown in the carriage with Tathan and Grandemaze. And that was the beginning of their story until they finally arrived in the village of Galia. Back to Galia village, after negotiating with Vitalistics, as the leader of the Galia, decided to be willing to delegate Asterix and Obelix to help Princess Fu Yi save the Empress and the Kingdom of China. Meanwhile, Julius Caesar looked upset in Rome because his wife Cleopatra wanted to return to Egypt with her new heart idol, Tobascos. The mighty sports teacher was done because of Tobascos, known more by the world than Julius Caesar, who is just known because of Galia in Rome. Not long after, Ri Ti Ki arrived and introduced himself as Prince Deng Xin Kins and Voi. He offered the land that the prince had plundered to Julius Caesar in exchange for a military army. Julius Caesar, who felt that he needed to make his name more known, accepted Ri Ti Ki's offer in the hope that China could also recognize him. Meanwhile, in the village of Galia, the villagers are letting go of Obelix and Asterix to go with Princess Fujie to China. One of the villagers even prepared a carriage in the form of a car for their vehicle. Getafix also gave a magic potion to Asterix, even though he wanted to refuse it. After all is ready, Obelix then pulls up the train, and it speeds off with the superpowers. Shortly after crossing the Mediterranean, they also arrived in North Africa. Here, Tat Han had time to teach Fu Yi, practicing Kung Fu while washing clothes by the river. Asterix speaking from a distance told Brandemais that the princess was practicing a hard life to live with him in the village of Galia. Hearing this, Brandemais didn't accept. They continued to argue and compete to get the princess. Grandemaze said that he and Fu Ya had date. Asterix then threatened to tell Fu Yi that Gerandemaze was not a Gallia citizen, but a Middle Eastern merchant who disguised himself as a Gallia citizen with his blonde wig to sell his wares. Meanwhile, in the Chinese kingdom, Prince Deng Xin Kin was seen hiding the Empress and the Epitomaze in prison in the middle of the forest. Deng Xin Kin then took out the pendulum to count the days. If there was no more pendulum left and the princess had not been found, he would kill the Empress. On the other hand, Julius Caesar, with his great army and Riti Kili, had moved across the Silk Road to China. After passing through the desert, Asterix and the Entourage arrived at Lutetia, a small town by the canal. They then entered a bar. Princess Fu Yai looked happy because her wish to visit Lutetia finally came true. When the bar singer asked about their intentions and goals, Lutetia and Brandemais said they sought the best ship captain. The singer then showed a man named Titanix, the best ship captain there. Asterix then asked Titanix to escort him to China by sea, but Titanix refused because the route was too complicated. Fu Yi then took out a piece of jewelry, eventually attracting Titanix's interest, and he was willing to take her. Suddenly there was a commotion when three robbers intended to blackmail the bar's owner. Asterix approached them and asked Obelix to help him, but Obelix refused. Asterix then used a magic potion that gave him strength. He immediately hit the two robbers until their bodies penetrated the roof. At the same time, Obelix fights the one remaining man in his death suit until the robber's body is slammed into the sky. On their way to China at sea with Captain Titanix in the middle of the journey, a pirate ship saw the ship that Asterix was traveling on and intended to rob it. The pirates, who were initially excited, suddenly became frightened after learning that the ship contained Gelia people. When Asterix and Obelix plan to attack the boat, Tat Han offers to attack them. There is a fight between Tat Han and the pirates what they call an attack from the Chinese tornado. Tathan easily defeats them all and then sinks the ship. When Tathan was watching the sunset on the bridge ship, Obelix approached her. Obelix was amazed by the extraordinary way of resisting Tathan when facing pirates earlier. Tathan then asks why Obelix never used a magic potion. Obelix replies that he was not allowed Dedefix to use the elixir because it was dangerous for him, even though he wanted to try it. And then we are brought to a flashback to when Asterix and little Obelix were stirring the magic potion on the stove. Asterix drank one spoon of the elixir and made him get the power. And it was Obelix's turn to try the medicine. He instead slipped until finally, his whole body went inside body filled with magic potions. And from there, he got pure strength without needing to drink potions since then. Titanix, secretly watching them, then tilted the ship and made the Obelix embrace Tat Han. Julius Caesar finally arrived at the gates of China and met with Prince Deng Xin Kin to perfect the plan cunning who conquered all six kingdoms. Rikiki introduces the prince to Julius Caesar. There, Julius Caesar holds the prince's beard but laughs at the war strategy he is studying. For Julius Caesar, he could do it quickly. 
The next day, Julius Caesar's troops and Deng Xinquan's troops joined to conquer the Chinese kingdoms individually. <laughs> Under the command of the warlord named Antivirus, namely Ibromovic, one by one, the kingdoms in China were also successfully controlled by them, leaving only one kingdom. Antivirus was considered a hero and became a spirit burner for the Roman troops. At night, Julius Caesar and the prince, and all his men gathered to organize the following strategy to dominate all of mainland China. Rikiki reminded that the one remaining kingdom is the most challenging kingdom to conquer. This kingdom is led by a prince named Kuko, whose myth is wearing a mask to hide his terrible face. Shortly after the Asterix group finally arrived in China, Captain Titanix decided to continue his journey worldwide. While walking in the marketplace, a monk gave a piece of paper to Tad Han, Obelix, who was curious to ask Tad Han what the contents of the message were, but she didn't tell him. Obelix was irritated because Tad Han was not honest about the letter earlier and left them. When Asterix and Obelix rested at an acupuncture place with confidence, Asterix said that he would bring Princess Fu Yi to live with him and live in his parents' cottage, which Asterix and Obelix now occupy. That's why when they come back later, he asks Obelix to move from that house. Unexpectedly, Obelix agreed with the plan and had the same goal. Obelix then confessed to Asterix that he had fallen in love with Tathan. Hearing this, Asterix laughed at Obelix, which offended Obelix until the two of them fought and discuss the injustice that Obelix had felt all this time. About himself not being able to taste the potion until Asterix's ban was not allowed to eat meat in the house they lived in, because the house belonged to Asterix's parents. In the market, some of Deng Xin Kin's envoys announced that they would behead the Empress in the next seven days at sunset. Princess Fu Yi then lit up and said that no one would hurt her mother. Seeing the presence of Princess Fu Yi there, the royal troops immediately hunted her. A battle broke out between them which could easily be won by Asterix and Obelix. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grain de Mace and two of Julius Caesar's men chose to hide and agreed as if they had never met each other. After Asterix, Obelix, Fu Yi, and Tat Han persisted in defeating Deng Xin Kin's men, Grain de Mace came out of hiding. After Asterix had arrived at the inn, they came by Master Li, the teacher of Tad Han, Crane Demace, who saw the door and thought he was a beggar. But Tad Han immediately reopened the door. Tad Han explains that Master Li was an ascetic who devoted himself to poverty. Grand Mice directly takes back the coin he was given to Master Li. Shortly, Master Li then used his knowledge to show that Deng Xin Kin had spread terror throughout China. He also directed the location where the Empress was being held, namely at a temple called Swan. Master Li asked them to immediately release the Empress and then go to the Kuko Palace, before Julius Caesar succeeded in seizing the last kingdom. Master Li said they would all meet the hideous Prince Kuko with a bamboo mast on his face. After Master Li's departure, Obelix takes his friends on a high-speed carriage to the Swan Temple. When they arrived, Tad Han immediately went to the temple on top of the cliff, where the Empress and Epitomas were locked. Tad Han immediately took the Empress out of there, while Epitomas chose to stay because he wanted to negotiate with Deng Xin Quin. The Empress was finally released and reunited with her daughter, and then the guards found out where they were and attacked them with arrows. They all ran to save themselves in the middle of the forest. In the middle of the forest, the Empress asked Princess Fu Yi to stay with Asterix and Obelix to join the Kuko people. Meanwhile, she and Tat Han will deploy other troops to surround Deng Xin Kin and Julius Caesar. Before leaving, Tat Han also says goodbye to Obelix. Karate has fallen for Obelix. <laughs> In another place, Julius Caesar was sitting with Deng Xin Kin. Suddenly saw Deng Xin Kin's face change into Cleopatra, and he almost kissed him. He felt that if he succeeded in conquering China, Cleopatra would be proud of him. Julius Caesar can't wait to conquer the Kuko kingdom the next day. The carriage brought by Obelix finally arrives at the palace of Prince Kuko. 
After entering the palace, Fu Yi introduces herself as a princess of the Empress. But his prince advisor told her to prove that she was not the spy of Deng Xin Kin. Asterix then told Fu Yi to show the coin her mother gave. And all the palace people also took a knee for her. Not long after, Prince Kuko appeared. It was seen the face of the prince who was handsome and not at all scary, which made Fu Yi fall in love. Fu Yi then held the prince's long hair and touched his face, while Asterix looked jealous to see it. It came the day when the Roman army led by Julius Caesar and the Deng Xin Kin troops, who were going to invade the kingdom of Kuko, had gathered in front of the palace. Their arrival was greeted by Princess Fu Yi, who said that she would defend the entire Chinese empire. Julius Caesar then asked how many troops Fu Yi had, who turned out to only number 10,000. While he brought around 80,000 people, Asterix Obelix and Prince Kuko joined Fu Yi. And a virus immediately ran towards his opponent, but suddenly his leg was injured, which required a substitute for football. Before fighting his enemy, Asterix gave Fu Yi and the Prince a magic potion. The battle between the Kuko troops and the Roman troops took place. <laughs> Because of the power of the elixir of Princess Fu Yi, Prince Kuko and Asterix could be easily fought their enemies. Likewise, Obelix and Dogmatix helped them fight the enemy troops, while Grain Demace, who is a loser, even pretends to be dead. Deng Xin Kin ordered his troops to release arrows toward the battle area. One arrow managed to hit Asterix's magic potion bottle so that the bottle leaked. Grain Demace could try drank the potion but failed to get strength, while Asterix, who ran out of potions, kept trying to fight the enemy even without strength. Seeing Asterix, who is in trouble, Obelix immediately helps him. Obelix says that even though they often argued, he always promised to take care of Asterix because he is his best friend. Asterix also apologizes to Obelix because he usually makes him angry. At the same time, the Roman troops manage to surround the princess and the prince. The princess then calls Asterix and Obelix to ask for help. But they both failed, helped Fu Yi, and even get wrapped together. At the same time, the troops were led by the Empress, their number was immense, and they finally surrounded the Roman forces and the Deng Xin Kin troops. Knowing that the Empress had one million troops, Julius Caesar was scared and chose to go back to Rome. After the departure of Julius Caesar, Princess Fu Yi immediately declared her victory and the Roman troops, who surrendered, finally left. After the war ended, vital statistics and the Empress stood before the Gallia villagers, celebrating their victory. On that occasion, Princess Fu Yi and Prince Kuko finally married. In the middle of a banquet, it looks like Tat Han and Obelix are looking at each other. Panacea, who realizes this, then comes to Obelix and says that Obelix should choose herself rather than having long-distance relationship if dating Tat Han. But Obelix still selects Tat Han. The two of them then hug each other and the film ends.